Okay, we will do some examples of the equations of uniform acceleration, or otherwise known as the equations of motion. An example would be, a car accelerates at 5 meters per second squared from rest. How long does it take to reach 50 meters per second? Now, this is easy to do without using any equations, but the point of this is that we have to get used to using these fantastic tools. So, on the occasions when the numbers become much more difficult, we don't run into any problems. So, these are the equations of motion. V is equal to u plus at, s is equal to ut plus half at squared, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Now, the interesting thing about this is that each equation has a in it, the acceleration, and then one of these other four um, uh, parameters are, are, are not there. So, for example, this one is v, u, a, and t, which means s is missing, which means that if you need to do a calculation and you don't know s, you, you would use this equation. You couldn't use it, yes, s here, or s here, if, you, if this equation, if you didn't know s. Okay, so you need to choose carefully which equation you're going to use. Um, so the first question, how long does it take for it to reach 50 meters a second? Well, 50 is the final velocity. Initial velocity is u. A is uh, acceleration, which is 5 meters per second squared. T is how long. This question does not need s. Um, so we would use the first one, not the second one, because... We need to know s to be able to work out the value here, and we need to know s here. Um, so you basically have to choose that equation for which parameters you have available. So what I want you to do now is to try to use these equations to solve these problems. So you can pause now and then look at the solutions. Another example is a cliff in Ireland is so high that when a stone is dropped off, it takes seven seconds for the stone to hit the water. How high is the cliff? You need to decide what is u, what's the initial velocity, what is the final velocity, which you don't know. Uh, what is s, what is the distance travelled, what is a, what is acceleration. Acceleration should be the acceleration due to free fall, 10 metres per second squared. And you need to find how high is the cliff. In other words, how high is S? Use these equations. Um, you know U, which is zero. V, you don't know. In fact, we, we will choose the equation that does not have V. We can't use this one because it has V. Um, and we don't need to know that. Looks like we have to use this one. Not the third one because that has V squared. So S is the distance. U is 0 times by T, whatever that is. Uh, sorry, 7 seconds. And half A T squared. So that gives you the value for S. So you can pause and try to do that solution. Describe the effects of air resistance on falling objects. Basically, the faster the object moves, the greater the air resistance. And the force of air resistance will always be in the opposite direction to the motion. When somebody jumps, jumps out of an airplane, initially, when t is equal to zero, the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, because there's only one force, the force of gravity pulling downwards. And as time goes, as time passes, then the resistive force, the air resistance, will increase. So this is our first um, person that jumps out. The air resistance is a uh, pretty much zero. The only force acting on it is his weight, so it's accelerating at 10 meters per second squared. Then what happens? Um, after a few seconds, 15 seconds, there's some air resistance. Now, the, for the, the net force is not what it was before. There was the weight, but now you have to subtract the force upwards. So now the acceleration is less than 10 meters a second squared. And finally, after a long time, the air resistance is so great that it equals the weight. Now, he's still falling down. The air, um, the parachute is still falling downwards. Um, but the weight is equaled by the air resistance. So what we have here is a situation where the, there are no net forces acting on the, on the parachutist. So if there's no net forces, they will either go at a constant velocity or be still. Well, since it is somebody who is falling from a plane, they will go then at a constant velocity. So the acceleration will be zero. 
and we call this the terminal. Okay, we have a question for you to do. We have a series of flash photographs taken as a marble comes off the edge of a table and falls down here. We know that each interval of time is 0.1 seconds. So after 0.1 seconds it's here, then here, then here, then here, and so on. Um, what we have to do is find the horizontal velocity. Now horizontally you can see that it travels the same distance every 0.1 seconds. It travels basically zero half of this, 0 0.25 meters in one, uh, 0 0.10 seconds. So you find out what the horizontal velocity is. Okay, now you know the horizontal velocity, uh, you can find out the acceleration. What? Find a point here, find out how much time has passed, find out the distance that's travelled, and work backwards using the equations of motion to find out what A is. Um, what you have is the distance travelled vertically, you have the time, we have the initial velocity vertically, which is zero. So you need to find out what um, A is. You can also um, draw, um, okay, draw the images of the marble at, at x is equal to 0 0.5 and x is equal to 1.0 uh, meters. So, um, okay. Now, on the images, sorry, draw the arrows to represent the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. So, the horizontal velocity will be horizontal and the vertical velocity will be vertical. And you need to draw arrows which show the sizes of these things. Uh, range, we won't do that now. That's the same kind of question again. Okay, I'm going to walk you through this question, which is the range of the cannon. You need to basically find, if this is the, the velocity, 100 meters a second, you need to find out what the horizontal component is of that. So, um, and the vertical component. You know that vertically, once you know the vertical component, you can find out um, what U is which is going to be the vertical component of 100. Uh, v is going to be the same value, but in the opposite direction, because this is uh, a parabola is a symmetrical shape. So uh, when it launches here at 100 meters a second, it will, when it impacts the ground, it will also be traveling at 100 meters a second. The time taken, uh, we don't know. Uh, the distance traveled, that's what we need to find out. So we want this equation. Um, you know what the final velocity is, you know what the initial velocity is, and um, so you need to find out what uh, uh, S is. So these are the steps. So, what you need to be able to do is to draw and analyze distance time, displacement time graphs. We'll stop there, I think.